Yeah. Welcome, everybody. I'm very happy that you made it into this room and you're, that you're joining this session. Um, as you can see, the session today is about enterprise mobility, seen from different angles. So I do not want to talk about the typical EMM stuff that you might all know, or the majority of you, but uh, look at it from yeah, a different um, perspective. And um, this whole presentation has been made on my iPad, so I did not use any PC or Mac or so to do it. I will also use my Apple Pencil, and I'm very um, excited about that because um, it's my first time I can really use it in a session. So before I was like taking notes and playing around. So um, I hope you can read my writing and uh, understand my scribbles. Um, <laughs> but I'll talk about it. So even if you don't, then you know what I'm writing. So um, I want to start with going back to my days as a product manager. Um, I've been nominated to be a product manager for an enterprise mobility solution. This was end of 2013. And they have the task to pitch the product strategy. So what am I going to do when I get the job as a product manager? And so um, after my eight hour work days, I was sitting at home and I was reading a lot and thinking a lot. And I was like, okay, so what can I do to make this product differentiate from other enterprise mobility solutions that there are on the market? And I watched a lot of um, webcasts and I compared with competitors and basically figured out, okay, enterprise mobility, that's about mobile device management, mobile app management, mobile content management. Yes, great, um, but somehow everybody, the, like the big vendors is doing that. So how can we differentiate? And I thought when users use mobile devices, then what do they want to do with this? What do companies want to achieve when they enter this idea of mobility and, and get mobile devices on board? There are several things. So they want to be able to get access to their data from any device that they have at hand. So it's a typical um, get access to data from anywhere story and uh, they want to travel and they want to travel light and then carry their big laptop with them. So it's about flexibility. Another thing, is we want to use apps that are maybe even easier to use on a mobile device than on a, on a laptop. So for example, I prefer to do annotations on a PDF on a mobile device because I can use my finger, I can um, mark stuff easily, I can write directly on the, on the text. And uh, so I prefer to do that on my tablet. And it can also sit easier like on, on a couch and it's, it's just um, comfortable. And so, um, you want to increase productivity. And also, like when you have downtimes, like you have to wait at the airport or so, it's easy to get your tablet out and, and do something. Another thing was, and this is something I see that um, maybe even vendors don't consider that much when they're talking about enterprise mobility, is that you want to improve your business processes. So it's not only about getting control of these devices and know um, what apps are on these devices and what device belongs to which user, but it's about having the right app to optimize your business process. Because all the like the apps we traditionally use have been made for PCs, and um, and thanks to these devices that also have cameras and they and NFC tags and are super portable, we can actually think about how we can make certain processes like the maintenance of a device or entering data at a construction site or for doctors walking through a hospital and having mobile patient data with them, we can improve these processes. So I thought this is huge. This is maybe even the biggest part of mobility. And then the, the fourth idea that I had was, okay, um, maybe we can even reinvent ourselves or our customers can do that because I was responsible for this accessibility solution and even find new business model, models. And we see this um, with things like um, Uber or like the <coughs> share economy uh, stuff where you do everything mobile and you can connect with people and uh, like Fudora so and, and create new business models and also mobile payment is a, is a huge thing and totally changes the financial sector. So I had these four ideas and I was like, okay, so um, how can we achieve this and how can we help our customers achieve this? And then I thought, well, and I'm using my Apple Pencil. <laughs> Oh, oh, this is really interesting. Huh. Okay, so I'm oh, this is so sad I can't use my Apple Pencil because I guess with this mode it doesn't work. Hmm. Does, this count? Okay. Does this count as a live demo? <laughs> <laughs> demo works, 
a demo goes to me, but I have an idea, and maybe this would even work. Oh, actually, this is okay. Hmm. Let's see. We need apps, so I guess I was too fast with my Apple Pencil, but I see in the future it won't work, so I might get into the slide mode again and do it there. So, we need apps. So I was like, um, yeah, this is the solution. So we have app developers in our company that, that actually made a productivity app to get access to, to files and be able to edit them and uh, share them with um, other business contacts. And I was like, so we have these developers here and they can make apps. They can make apps for uh, the manufacturing in this industry and the travel industry and transformation and so on and so on. And so I was very proud, proud to have found an idea on how we can differentiate. I went back to the management team and I did my pitch. And uh, said, so my conclusion was, we need to build apps. However, and I guess now I can't, right? So I will try a trick, see if I can <coughs> see, so can see how I make this presentation. So, um, let's see. Huh. Ah. I think I know what it is, so bear with me for a second. I'm not sure if I actually connect with this. Here we go. <laughs> so, it's going to be happy because it's not working. Let's see what kind of world we need to do. Let's see what's going on. So, so, so. Yay. 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 so it got denied because I was told no, this is not our expertise. We don't have, we, we can't uh, build apps for these uh, line of businesses. It's we don't have enough developers. We don't have um, good enough like relations with these uh, sectors. So this is not what we do. I said, oh, damn it. Such a good idea. So um, then, okay, back to enterprise mobility. It's an enterprise mobility solution. How can we differentiate? And luckily, we um, had a productivity app, as I just mentioned, that allowed you to get access to files. And I said, okay, so how can we improve this part? Because I think the secret is in the app. So, let's see. Um, I thought, how do all these diff uh, these EMM solutions that are, on, that are on the market differentiate from each other? And what can we do that's special? And uh, so I compared a lot and looked at the solutions. And so actually now I'm, I'm, I'm switching also into my current role. So, back, so out of this product manager role and I take the view from today. Because nowadays, um, like, a, yeah, like one of my um, side projects is that I'm working as an analyst in enterprise mobility and I'm working with a lot of vendors and uh, test their solutions and then figure out um, what I like, what I don't and give advice to customers. And so I thought, okay, first thing, how they differentiate is the usability. So anytime you install an enterprise mobility solution, you get some kind of console or the admins get some kind of console and you have EMM policy or like MDM policies in there. You um, have the possibility to, to get profiles onto these devices, to connect to VPNs and uh, make sure they have the right Wi-Fi profiles installed and you might switch on some single sign-on and use um, app tunnel or uh, <coughs> VPNs so you have all these kinds of profiles and they all do this because this is what they get from the vendors this is what they get from Apple, Apple and, and Google and Samsung and um, yeah, we can name the others as well and, um, so basically then I looked at um, different consoles and that's like had them show me a lot of demos and I asked lots of questions. I figured out, okay, so if you decide to go for an EMM solution, you need to understand uh, from which angle you're coming from. So do you really want to only manage devices? Then like in a, in a retail store where um, the users don't actually matter because you have the devices there to, to show some product catalogs or for the cashier to basically have the people pay. And um, so in these cases, you just want to know how many devices you have at the store, make sure they connect to everything and um, you want to be able to write them. And in this case, you can use a solution like, for example, I don't want to do any vendor brushing, but just to give you examples, that basically has any kind of a platform in their uh, system and, and embedded all the policies that there are so you can basically manage any device and this is their strength but then <coughs> further okay what do they do around app management 
well, they have their own like app catalog that they provide with their solution, then you think as a customer, do I need these apps, apps? do my users want these apps? Well, you need to figure that. And um, when it comes to content management, they have one app um, that is a container, gives you access to the content, and um, you don't have many capabilities. You can view it, you can download it, you can upload it again, share, and so on. So this is here they're strong in device management. Um, then I looked at Snow Software. Who of you know Snow Software? Okay, a couple. And they are actually coming from this um, software asset management angle and uh, help customers to understand what licenses they have and also help to optimize uh, like rollout uh, processes. <coughs> they said, okay, now we have these mobile devices as well, so we will include them into our solution and allow our customers to roll out profiles onto these devices and to make sure we embed um, the overview of the license that they, that they have, some apps that they purchase, into our console. So when you're coming from this angle and you're like, um, we do not uh, really see how we can uh, prove our business processes or we don't have roaming workers, but we want to allow our users to bring their devices and we want to kind of have an overview of what software or what apps they download onto these devices, then we take this solution and we, we have our software asset management. So, yeah, different angles, different solutions that you really need to look at your use case. Or when you are Cyprix customers, you might think, okay, yeah, um, ZenMobile is supposed to work with our, with our existing infrastructure, it's supposed to, and um, you simply add, take it as an add-on. So, but again, you need to see what's your goal and what you want to do in the future. Then you can also look at the ecosystem around these solutions. So again, what partners do they have? Um, what um, apps do these partners deliver? And uh, does it make sense to go with the solution? Another factor is, and I was talking about devices versus users. So some of these EMM solutions really focus on only the, like, the devices in the center and everything else is built on top of the device. Then you have other solutions where the user is in the center and you basically don't care what device the user is using, just want to make sure they always get access to the data. So again, if you, for example, a business traveler that always changes devices and uh, wants to make sure you get the right access to the right applications, take a solution that focuses on the user. If you're a retail, a retail store or if you're a doctor because they share devices as well, maybe rather look at a device, man at a, yeah, device management solution where the device is on the focus. Um, of the solution. And then I realized, okay, um, so you have these different angles and um, all the policies in there, they're basically the same. So uh, yeah, and you, you, you need some kind of EMM solution to be able to manage your devices and to get apps onto these devices and to be able to distribute apps. So you <coughs> need it, but it's not mobility, you're not done. It's just a tool that you need and then think further. How do you make your users productive? How do you improve business processes? So, <coughs> let's look at apps. And here we're actually changing the angle. So mobility is not anymore an enterprise mobility solution, but it's about the apps. In order to speak about apps, we need to look at some facts because we need to prove what I'm saying is true. Like, is the app really in the center and is this the most important part about mobility? Well, I did my research and I figured out that we have 2.2 million apps in the Google Play Store at the moment. We have 2 million apps in the App Store and this number is increasing. It's like, they say, 3 million in 2017, which is next year, and so it, it's a very steep curve and uh, we have more and more apps. For your information, um, in the uh, Windows Store, we have 669,000 apps, so much less. In the Amazon App Store, we have 600,000 apps. And in the BlackBerry app world, <laughs> what's your guess? What's your guess? Five, ten. <laughs> yeah, okay, it's a little bit more. It's um, 234,500 apps. And this might explain... <laughs> Now, this might explain why the BlackBerry was successful, right? Just not even have apps to deal with. In addition, we have uh, the youth today, that's a generation, um, like the digital generation, 
that spends over three hours on their mobile devices per day. So imagine they have a school day, they come home at, so that they should listen to the, the lessons and when they come home, they should, um, at three or four or so, and then they spend three hours in addition, like maybe also in the morning, but it's a lot of time, it, it takes all the rest of their day. And you might notice, like, who has kids in the room, I guess? Majority, yeah. so yeah, they always use their phones. And why is that? Why is the app so popular? Well, it's because it's much easier to develop an app and also cheaper than developing an, an application for the desktop. And every like you learn some coding or you use templates and you can build an app and you're up and running. Okay, so um, <laughs> this is great. And these statistics are mostly about uh, user uh, consumer apps. Yeah, when we go to the app store, we find consumer apps. But it's really difficult to find business apps. So what do organizations use? And so how can we make sure that our customers find these business apps? And here, so for, yeah, other companies have thought about it as well. And so this is why, for example, IBM and Apple founded a partnership where IBM builds business apps that run on iOS devices. And, um, their goal was to have 100 apps in, in their IBM App Store by end of 2015. I couldn't find if, if this number was uh, achieved, but um, I found that um, in the middle of the year, like in June, July, they had already 50 apps. And so if you scale that up, I guess they, they could have made it. And um, so they mostly build apps for the transportation sector, financial sector, um, then insurances, logistics, um, and uh, the transformation um, vertical. And here, um, they made sure that the apps were kind of like templates that was fitting um, like several businesses in, in these verticals, and then they could basically um, attach these apps to their backend data and um, like customize these apps for their use cases. In addition, um, we have lots of um, app developers um, out there, like lots of companies that have been founded um, that um, collect the expertise of, of app development and that focus on building business apps. So I'm, I'm in touch with, with a couple of them and it's super exciting to see what kind of apps they build. So for example, uh, one project was um, where this app developer has built an app for the No, uh, which helps them to generate leads at events. And I was like, okay, and there are lots of templates here, and why do you uh, build an app for that, and why is it so important? Well, um, actually with their forms that they had before, that they had to fill in manually, they made a lot of mistakes. And uh, so uh, names were not uh, written correctly when this data was taken over into the CRM system. Then you needed to have another person that actually typed in the data, and it, it took a lot of time. Like, imagine you go to a, like a, a Citrix Synergy or a VMware, you have, like, hundreds of leads, it takes forever. And so um, they wanted this app that also connected um, with their uh, backend systems and could pull in data uh, about the, the cars, and the models that they were selling, and um, they could also um, uh, manage certain uh, like lead groups, so they had several events in there, so it was really like customized app. And they reduced this um, error rate down to like almost zero percent. I would, they told me it's zero percent because you can't do anything wrong and it's all validated. And if you haven't entered the right email address, you get an, an error message. But I was like, really? Like, um, you never know. So I would say almost down to zero percent. Um, and there, there are tons of apps like that. Um, then you have companies that actually build business app stores, like for example, GetApp, or also the business app market, which allow companies to filter um, apps according to their use cases and then find apps that are specifically um, developed for their business use cases. Then you also have vendors like, for example, Powwow. Who has, who has heard about Powwow? Maybe it's Okay, so, it is, so they were the last Civic Synergy, for example, and their uh, mission is to uh, put uh, like, yeah, desktop apps into their pieces um, and then rebuild them into a mobile app. So it's not just click of a button and the mobile app um, um, appears, it's really having engineers there that look at the different parts of the desktop app that they use and then they make it user friendly and make it fit to the screen 
and it's a huge business model and they, they grow a lot and um, yeah, and in this process you can also think about, okay, what has our business process been in the past and now we have this chance to transform this app and make it better and make it more user friendly, so how can we even improve the business process? And then we also have um, vendors that uh, say, okay, we have lots of reoccurring um, situations and we do not want to make app building dependent on developers, but we want to allow uh, marketing people, or sales people, or line of business managers to build apps. And so they come out with um, templates, that like kind of like drag and drop templates, that allow um, organizations to build very simple applications. So, for example, they would have um, like a product information sheet that also the sales people could take out in the field and then talk about the products. They would have reporting tools, they would have event tools, and all these apps can simply be built by anybody in the company. And they also they have lots of uh, uh, inquiries from customers and grow like crazy. So um, yeah, it confirms that the app is good. Okay, so then the question is, okay, now um, companies have built these great apps and or had developers build them and they, um, often even start with the app first. So for example, Renault, they, they don't have an EMM solution. They just said, okay, we have this use case and um, we have to have this app. And then I think, okay, or actually, I would come and ask, how do you distribute these apps? How do you like get them on the devices? And they would say, well, we upload them to the App Store, um, which makes every app they, they have public. And um, yeah, it might work in some places if there are not so many apps, but if there are many apps, you just grab the app store and it's not the right solution to do. And also, if you develop apps for consumers, then you need to think about app store optimization, which is a totally different topic. And here, um, you need to understand that we're not searching for apps in the same way we're, we're searching for information on the web. So a Google search is completely different from an App Store search. And here you need to look at, okay, how do the users think? Like what topic would they search for? And what app is maybe similar? And instead of having certain keywords, you would maybe rather put all your competitors in the um, keyword section. And uh, so it's a, there are like also like vendors out there that explain customers how, how they do App Store and optimization. Um, another idea they had was sideloading, which I wasn't a big fan of either um, because they're really not in control of the apps. And um, so on uh, Google, you're basically just plugging your Android device. Uh, for iOS devices, you use the Apple Configurator, but as I say, you have no control. And so it was like, you need an enterprise app store. So your, your customers actually really need this tool, which is an enterprise mobility solution that comes with an enterprise app store. So. The conclusion here is that an EMM or or even a pure MAM solution that has no um, mobile device management part but just focuses on app management is necessary. And um, here we can now yeah look at um, how to how to do app management, but before I want to do this, um, I often, uh, like, I, I would ask the question and I would also hear the question from customers, okay, but now we're, we're putting business apps on these devices, they have, the users have private apps there, they have business apps there, so what about security, how do we manage all this? And here, actually, so everybody maybe now in the room who have been in touch with mobility would say, yeah, you use a container and you, uh, you separate uh, private apps from business apps, I would depends. Because um, if you build apps that do not exchange any data with other apps, that just allow you to read some information from the back end, or apps that do not store any data locally because it's just not necessary or you don't even want the apps to do this, then all the data would sit in the back end and the app would just present this data. And in this case, you do not need any container. The, then you can actually really upload this app to the app store and download it for the use case. And also, if it's not a business critical app, so users can decide whether they want this app or not. So in this case, we can say there's no isolation of these apps needed. However, if there's an exchange and if you want to have offline data, then you need to make sure you can separate private from business data and you can also delete this app from the device when the device gets stolen or lost or so. 
or if it's a bring your own device and the user leaves the company, you want to make sure there are no business relevant apps on the device anymore. And in this case, you would really use a so called container. And so now let's uh, look at the different approaches on how you can actually build these containers and how you can um, manage apps. And now I will use my Apple Pencil to scribble some uh, sketches for you. So um, let's see how I will do. So uh, there are actually like three main approaches that I see on how you can manage apps and how you can make sure that you do not um, <coughs> lose any data. <coughs> the first one is the native app management approach. And here you basically use the functionality of the operating systems to determine which apps are allowed to communicate with each other. So in iOS you have this open in functionality and with the help of the um, MDM policies you can determine uh, that for example only managed apps, only business apps that have been distributed to the device are allowed to talk with each other and they cannot exchange any data with private apps. So this will basically look like this. So you have some business apps, business, and you have some private apps. And then you would make sure, okay, only these business apps here are allowed to communicate with each other. And yeah, they have their container and you do not need to use any other method to kind of like modify these apps and so on. Just use mobile device management policies to do that. The requirement for this is, of course, that you have a mobile device management agent that can talk to the device on the mobile device. And so the question here is, is this the right approach for bringing your own device use cases where users do not want to have any agents on their devices and they do not want to have the administrator to control what apps they have to see, basically, what apps they have on the device and um, or the, give them the possibility to wipe the device. Yeah? So they, they don't feel comfortable with it. So I think it's a nice approach, but maybe not for bringing your own device, unless you have some kind of agreement with their users that um, they get the device from the organization and can also use it for private use, but then there is an MDM client on the device. <coughs> then the second approach is the one that um, has been introduced by <coughs> Airwatch, Citrix, Mobile Iron, Good, like the ones that were the first ones in the market, and they say, okay, we have this um, container approach that is based on app wrapping, and I know, I mean, nowadays, app wrapping is almost like a, like a negative word because um, it's very difficult to, to make it work because you basically build uh, or you modify the app in a way um, that, that you kind of like add lines of codes to it so that the EMM solution can communicate with the app, but then you modify it, it's not the original one anymore, you don't get support from the developer, often it doesn't even work, and so it's very frustrating. However, um, it's a possibility and if you are happy with using the apps that this vendor provides and then have some because they might have some partners um, that you want to use in addition, then theoretically it can work, but it was good too. But just to complete this list here, I will use it and so the idea is that you have one app, you kind of like wrap it, so you can modify it, then you have your mobile device, and not the best painter, so, and the app is distributed onto this device. And here, um, yeah, you can either you have an MDM agent on the device, but there are also app management solutions that uh, work without that. And then uh, the customers need an enterprise app store um, in the back end, and all apps are distributed by this enterprise app store, and they have this one app sitting uh, on their devices that basically communicates with the back end. So you either need an say MDM or MAM solution and if you have the pure MAM solution then it would theoretically work with Windows device users because you can control the rest of the device but then the question is also okay how do you connect them to the to your network and how do you get the VPN profile on it so it's mostly a solution that is used for external um, people like freelancers and contractors that work with this company but then use their own devices and do not want to be like part of this company. 
And then the third approach is that you have one app on the device, and then this app uh, communicates with or makes it possible to access several apps in the backend. So you, 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 for example, you would download some kind of viewer app, and when you open this viewer app, you get a list of like 10 more apps that have been created for this company, and then you choose one of these apps that you want to work with, and they are presented in this one viewer app. And this way you do not need any um, agent on the devices because this viewer app is simply downloaded from the app store. Usually you have to log in, and when the user like, leaves the company, loses the device or so on, you just cut the login, and then they also don't get access to the, like, the finder, doesn't get access to the backend apps anymore. So this was the code look like this. You have your mobile device, you have um, this one app there, and then this app presents several apps that have been built in the backend. And um, they're mostly um, either web apps or even, so the viewer app is a native app, but then the apps in the background are web apps or um, hybrid apps. And a hybrid app is basically when you kind of like, I use the same term, but they say like that wrap the um, web app into an, a file, APK or ITA file, and then you can install it um, on the mobile device. And it runs like a native app, and the advantage is that you can use features like the camera or NFC or um, the microphone and, and things like that. So here um, you don't need any MDM agent. It's suitable for bringing your own device and mostly you have hybrid apps that um, may be restricted on their functionality. Um, okay, so um, we have these three approaches. I think the most advanced one is uh, actually the native app management approach. And this is confirmed by all these big vendors that have founded the App Config Community, which is a, like an initiative to teach developers to build apps according to these native app management guidelines. So for example, um, if you want to include an app in a single sign-on mechanism, this app needs to be able to communicate with the uh, single sign-on policy on the device. And so they, they explain to these app developers in a huge documentation, okay, if you want to make your app available for a single sign-on, include this line of code because then we <coughs> as an EMM vendor can talk to this app and can include it in, our, in this um, group of single sign-on apps. And um, so they really push this and there are more and more vendors um, like applying for the app company community and uh, getting into the club, so to say, and uh, are, yeah, pushing the developers to develop the apps like that. So I think this is future, and we can also see as Apple and uh, Google, the main vendors, yeah, have um, adapted this way of uh, app management. It's, it's the way to go. Okay, so um, now we've, we've talked about the app being the great thing to make users more productive, and then you may think, okay, so, um, What's our use case or our customers' uh, use cases? So where should they start? And what app should they get? And um, which EMM solution should they get? And basically, I see like two main use cases in the market where you need to make your decisions first, and then you go up from there. And this is on the one hand the office worker that um, yeah travels a lot and uh, gets access to email on phone. And uh, documents on a, on a cloud search or on a file server, they make their edits, they might use um, apps like Evernote because they like it and they want also want to use it in business. And um, for these uh, use cases, you would rather um, use an app management solution that is native because you are very, very flexible in adding any kind of app to this um, system. And um, yeah, so let's see. And this is a very um, uh, user-focused solution, so the user is able to simply exchange a device and get the same functionality. So you would use a user-focused EMM solution. And um, in order to get apps, um, yeah, users would either download them from the app stores, or if you want uh, to improve your business processes and take apps uh, that have been running on PCs that they use for the office PC. Um, then you could use an app transformation solution. 
So basically what you have is a native mobile app management solution, then you need a user-focused UNM solution, and the apps come either from the App Store or I mean also in enterprise app stores of course. And then we have the second approach, which is the more device-focused approach, where the capabilities of the devices are used to um, yeah, improve business processes, like uh, using them as a scanner, or um, uh, yeah, the, we have the sleep generation app. Then um, I have an example where construction workers had to input data from the construction site. Well, I actually had a very interesting example just a couple of weeks ago where uh, there was also a construction site and then you have these um, white and orange, um, I don't know what it's called, these Cold. 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 Yeah. You Cold. know what I mean, the things Cold. that dry Cold. Cold. Yeah. And uh, so basically it costs money to, um, like every day they're spending there, it costs money. And so um, they also need to make sure that none of these guns get stolen and so they have people walking around counting them and make sure they, they still sit at the right position. <laughs> and so they, they thought about, okay, how can we improve this and how can we maybe use mobility to, to do this? And so the idea now is to build an app that has a counting and scanning, uh, like an NFC scanning functionality. And they, would, they have these NFC chips also in these um, things. Oh, and <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and then um, they would simply like walk around and scan all these uh, things, and <laughs> so um, and, and basically, yeah, it, like it was uh, much faster. They make less mistakes because they do not have to count manually, and um, yeah, they kind of like improved or even changed yeah. their business process. And I was like, oh, how crazy is this? Like, how do you get these ideas? But it's cool. And so for these uh, situations, you do not care about the user, because sometimes devices, for this Renault case, the devices are even rented. They don't even own them. So um, you just need a, uh, an EMM solution that is device focused. <coughs> then um, it depends, sometimes you only have one app on the device, like at, at a retail store, and then it, it runs in kiosk mode, and you can't do even anything else. Or you have several, if you have several and if you have lots of devices, you need to manage it. And so you need a, an, an, an uh, app management solution. And here it's either native app management or they could even use the, the wrapping because they have developers. And if they want to uh, build apps so that fit into the, this uh, wrapping uh, strategy, then these developers need to use certain SDKs. And so if, if they have that, Theoretically, also do that. And um, yeah, and here they use app developers because every app is unique. <coughs> app developers. Okay, so now um, yeah, we've seen that um, you're not done with enterprise mobility. The app is uh, in, in the center to actually make the users productive and to give them access to the data that they work with. And we've seen how to get these apps on these devices, how to manage them, and how to separate private and business. So uh, the conclusion is that um, you should think a little bit further than just uh, installing an EMM solution. That's not mobility, that's a tool. Um, think about your goal first, think about what apps you need and how you get these apps. If you need developers, if you can download them, if you can go to a business app store, um, yeah, find the right way uh, for you. And even, perhaps, choose your EMM solution after you've built your app or in the same process because then you already know what kinds of apps you have and how they are developed and then you can decide, okay, how, or what's the best way to distribute them. So, um, this was my conclusion and I want to say one more thing. We only <laughs> talked. <laughs> we only talked about this part of mobility, the enterprise mobility part, but there's a completely 
like different or, or additional feel to it, which is the uh, hardware use mobility to communicate to your end users. And this is maybe even the bigger part in mobility. It's super interesting what kind of um, apps they're built and what kind of new business models we find. And I would say, like, if we all talk about digital transformation and we maybe can't even hear it anymore, and I would say the digital transformation maybe does not even happen inside the company. It's just like a super small part. This is actually the digital transformation. And mobility <coughs> is a part of it. And digital transformation actually means to like reinvent yourself and uh, use the digital technologies to um, improve your communication, to address your customers wherever you are. But this is writing in scores and verse, another story maybe for next time. Thank you very much.